Hi everyone. My name is Karen and I'm a part of the dissociative system. And in this video, I'm going to be addressing a question that was asked by one of our subscribers about how we cope with anxiety and panic, specifically how we get out of the mental pattern of anxiety when we're in an anxious slash panic state. And I assume what they're asking is how we detach from obsessive anxious thoughts when we're in that kind of heightened state. The answer to this question involves some talk about deprogramming, but as this person did not identify themselves that I can recall as a mind control survivor, I'm going to try to speak in a way that I think will be helpful to both survivors and non-survivors. So first I want to say I'm really anxious right now. I, um, I actually am inspired to make this because I'm having heightened anxiety today, so it's on my mind. Um, I experience more or less non-stop heavy anxiety. I've dealt a lot with panic attacks and all I've been able to do is improve it over time with a combination of coping tools that I use on a daily basis and actual deprogramming and trauma work. For me, I've found that when I'm in what I call a thought spiral, that it's a result of me being triggered in my trauma. That anxiety for me and panic attacks are a function of my PTSD and that sometimes they are caused by programming inside, but even that is still caused or rooted in PTSD. So that's probably the most helpful thing that I can offer is that I tap into an awareness that the cause is trauma and then I look for what triggered it. Oftentimes it's obvious. Oftentimes it's something that I'm compulsively doing in the moment in a dissociated state. So for example, what got me so anxious today, in addition to some nightmares that I had last night, was a bunch of comments and attention that I have received surrounding one of my testimonies. I made a survivor testimony specifically aimed at the general public a few months ago that just got posted on beforeitsnews.com, and I believe that to be the cause of a sudden influx of views and comments. And I didn't just get triggered by the comments, I got triggered by the fact that a dissociative part of me, or parts of me, took over, and in co-consciousness, I watched them read through comment after comment and reply to a bunch of them when we really should have been taking a step back and taking care of ourselves. And so I felt myself getting more and more anxious through this altar as I watched us fail to take care of ourselves and obsess on what people had to say to us and about us in our video. So the reason I'm sharing this is to just give an example of the kind of thing that will trigger me into an anxious thought spiral and explain how the most helpful thing I can do for myself is to recognize that I'm triggered and to then try to switch back into my body out of the dissociated state that I was in and take control so that I can stop doing the thing that's activating me. It is really helpful for me to take a breath and to just notice that I'm not okay. To try to get into my body and just really be present for how not okay I am. And um, yeah, I answered that you know, specifically around my dissociative system, but I would like to also say that to those who do not have DID, um, but have PTSD, that dissociation is a common symptom of post-traumatic stress. And so I hope that when sharing what I do to get out of dissociative spells, I am helping not just DID survivors, but PTSD survivors in general. The last thing I'm going to say, and then I might just switch and someone else will take over and talk, so I don't even know if this video will end anytime soon. 
But the last thing I myself am going to say is that it helps me a lot to have structure in my life, to have something that I can go to in my immediate vicinity that will ground me, that's consistently there. And not just something that's consistently there, but something that I have to put in front of myself with intention so it's in my mind. And for me right now, that is a to-do list of coping tools to practice and self-care things to practice, as well as things I have to do, you know, have to get done in my day-to-day life that I might not want to, on a whiteboard. I think I dissociated there, so I'm sorry if that sentence didn't flow. I put this list on a whiteboard, and I put it in an easily accessible place in my room, and I make sure that when I get triggered, I can just go to this list, and I can look for something to do that would be helpful, and then I can cross it off when I'm done, and it gives me a distraction, it gives me a sense of accomplishment, and it gives me a sense of order and control. One of the things that causes the worst anxiety spirals for me is having too much that I have to remember that is not written down. So if, for example, on this channel, I agree to make a bunch of videos for different people or to research a bunch of things and I don't write them down somewhere or take screenshots of them or do something that ensures that they are recorded in an easily accessible place, I will get extremely anxious because it will constantly come up into my mind that I have these obligations that I have to remember. So it's really helpful for me to write stuff down, have to-do lists, and make sure that my worries about not getting stuff done enough um, or promptly enough can be alleviated by it literally being out of my head. I used to journal a lot when I was in these thought spirals, and that helped a lot getting it out. I would do automatic writing through my dissociation. That really, really helped me. I've had to, however, stop doing that because I found that it was leading to me being accessed. So to those who aren't mind control survivors, sorry for the sound of the train, to those who aren't mind control survivors who are dealing with threats of accessing, perhaps journaling could be extremely helpful. And not just having a journal somewhere in one's house, but actually having one on hand all the time, that's something that really helped me. I'm sorry, I kind of slipped into giving advice, but it's just something I know that has been helpful for a lot of people, not just me. So yeah, those who aren't going to be putting themselves at any kind of safety risk by recording their thoughts into a journal, maybe just writing thoughts could help. Okay, I am too anxious and overheated to keep making this video. So I'm going to stop now, but I hope that this has been helpful to the person who asked, and I hope that this is helpful to people in general. There's so much more that we could say, but like I said, this is all I can say for now. Thank you.